here with Head Concordia Track and Field Coach Matt Beisel to preview the 2019-20 indoor season first of all. And, and I mean, we can even talk a little outdoor, although that's a ways into the future. Uh, but first off, we look at, uh, you know, you're coming off a, a cross-country season, which uh, was obviously especially great on the women's side with the winning a conference championship. What does that maybe do to from a momentum standpoint of trying to carry that over into track season too. I think distance is an area that we've been taking a few years to build and I think on both the guys and the girls side it's going to help us at a conference level for sure in adding a bunch of points to events that we even weren't able to do last year and because the kids have developed so much and then we have these hot new freshmen in that are doing some good things. We also you know, from a national standpoint, I think we have some some kids that can qualify for nationals and potentially help us make All-American that we didn't have last year. And so from those perspectives and the mental excitement of what we accomplished this fall, I think that's really setting us up for another event area being strong at the GPAC and national level. What does it say about the level of, of athletes that you've you've got on board now? At, at least for the women, you've essentially won three conference championships in a row. With, yeah, I don't I don't hate that. Yeah, <laughs> with with indoor, outdoor, and then into cross country, and you've also had a, a, a top two placement in uh, GPAC on the men's side at indoor last year. Right. But what does that say about the level of athlete in the program right now? We, we have a, a range of kids that we recruit, and in the three recruiting classes that have been brought in since I took over, we have had kids that are first, second at state. We have probably, I would guess, at least a you know, fifth of our team, if not more, were state champions in their events in high school, and then a lot of second, third, and fourth places. So those kids show up here and make an immediate impact at the conference and in many cases the national level. Uh, guys take about a year longer, even if you were the state champion as a guy, most of those guys have to develop a little bit, especially in the throws, to be able to make the same sort of impact. And so there's a little bit of a year delay. Girls come in and are able to do it right off the bat. And at the same time, we also have a pretty big chunk of, of developmental kids who are really solid athletes, good athletes, but, but maybe in their particular high school situation they were the one fast kid or they didn't have an event coach and they had to kind of watch YouTube videos and coach themselves. Or for whatever reason the, the team culture or having a training group that was able to push them just wasn't there. And that's a lot of the kids. We have a lot of small town kids who did great with what they had and, and what their coaches were able to do for them, but then they get here and the resources we have are phenomenal, and so then they suddenly advance hugely in performance, even as a freshman, and, and a lot of those kids hit it big for us. Well, I, I believe you've named some new captains, right, for, for both men and women. Uh, maybe you can fill us in on them and, and a little bit about why they're, they're good leaders for your programs. We, we let the athletes determine or nominate captains, and the way that we found works, as we, we've experimented with a few things, but we're, what we're doing now, and we've done for two years now, is at the beginning of the year, when all the kids come back from the summer, we start track practice right away, along with cross country. So while the distance kids are doing their thing in the hot August sun, the throwers are working, the hurdlers, the jumpers, and all those guys. and so we let four weeks go by where the freshmen get a better idea just from observation. And we tell them at the beginning of the four weeks, pay attention. Who are the leaders? Who are the people stepping out uh, and, and doing the things that leaders do? And we also say to them, pay attention to kids who don't just care about the event group, but care about the team as a whole. And then at the end of four weeks, we bring the whole team together, give them a slip of paper and a pen, and say, write down one guy, one girl that you think exemplify leadership in a positive, Christ-centered way for the whole team. 
and for two years in a row they've done a great job and we just picked the people that get the top four votes on the girls and the top four on the guys. Funny thing is, is it ends up being fairly representative of all the events and, and again we rely on them within our events as well. But those co captains meet with our staff every two weeks and we have a good discussion about you know, what's going on, what's the pulse of the team, what are some things we as coaches need to know about, and then we also put jobs on and obligations on the captains. One of their things is they have to plan at least two really big all-team activities for team building, and so the last two years we've had a lot of fun with Halloween costume contests and relays in costume, and then a big you know, double elimination dodgeball tournament. And, and so you put all those things together, the captains are people who care more about other people more than themselves. They're great athletes in their own right, and so from a performance standpoint, they have the credentials for people to be able to say, okay, here's somebody that not only is a good leader and cares about me, but they also know how to get out there and grind and get the job done on the athletic field. And, and I think that combination is what kids look for when it comes to leadership on a team like this. Mm -hmm. I think for sure when, when you got here, Concordia was certainly known for at that time for having great throwers, and I think that's that's continued. How, how have you maybe continued to to get everything the way you'd like it to be from an overall standpoint and just uh, being strong across all event groups? It's just recruiting all the event groups. and. Coach McLaughlin has continued to do an outstanding job of recruiting good throwers, and I work side by side with him now. I usually, you know, work hard to get to know his throws recruits as, as the process goes on, just as he does. I make a personal phone call as a head coach to every single kid that we're recruiting, and and get to know them, and then meet with them. So it's a it's a team effort. But then again, working with the other coaches, we we recruit each of the different event areas. As a cross-country coach, obviously I invest quite a bit into bringing in some good distance kids and mid-distance kids, but we also need depth. If we're going to be relevant in the GPAC conference level, we've got to have a bunch of good horizontal jumpers, a bunch of high jumpers, a bunch of hurdlers, kids who can do multi-events, kids who can throw, kids who can pole vault, and, and again, working with each of those event coaches as we have visits coming in, those guys contact and stay in touch with our, our kids that we're recruiting. We've had a lot of success bringing in kids across the board so that finally, for the first time in years, we have robustness in every event. And I think that's going to play itself out this coming year pretty well, like it did last year. You talk a lot about how the, the women's side is there's been a lot of success, but maybe you can put it into perspective just how much the men improved up last year to uh, they had a, a top 10 national finish at indoor as well last right. year. Right. Yeah, when it's funny because when I took over the program, we ended up in 2015 with the guys outdoor national championship and the women's in 2016 same thing. And in 2016 our men also were second at nationals. When I took over in 2017, we won, we got second at indoor nationals for the guys. And that was pretty cool. I had nothing to do with it. You know, it was, it was the other coaches and the kids that they had worked with and recruited. But it was fun to be a part of. And we all knew as a staff, every kid on the guys' side that scored for us at nationals my first year in 2017 was graduating, other than a couple of relay legs. And we knew we were going to be down the next year. So we went from second at nationals to I think six time for 69th at nationals, and we only scored a couple of points. But we also knew that with the guys that we had coming in with successive recruiting classes, we were going to begin to chip our way back up into the where the women were, and it's just taking some patience and some work. So you're right. Um, 2018, we worked our way. You know, we, we had kind of a rough year from that perspective. 2019, our guys got second. Um, at in, I'm sorry, ninth at indoor, and, a, and not quite as good at outdoor. But this year, I think we're going to be able to chip even closer to where we were. And again, I want to get both our men and our women to be in a position where they can win the G Pack in all of our different 
sports, indoor, outdoor, and cross country, and also have a shot at winning nationals. So that's the goal. What are some of those areas that you expect to be strong at? I, I know you could you could spend a lot of time talking about each event grouping, but right. uh, I know there's certain ones maybe that, that have all Americans back that, that you expect big things from too. Right. Um, so let's start with the women. On the pole vault, we have a lot of great girls who can make a big impact. Right now, just looking at the national level, which obviously means the conference level as well, we have Anna Bach, who made it to nationals one year. She's a junior. Um, had a bit of a down year last year, but I think she's on the comeback. Allison Brooks is vaulting very well right now. She's our school record holder, went 12-10. And Mackenzie Gravo, another senior, she has gone 12-8 before, and she made, you know, made All-American last year. Uh, we have Aaron Mapson, who was fourth at Nationals indoor and outdoors a freshman last year. We've got Tristan Metzger. She was Tristan Mosier, but she got married this summer. And she made All-American at Nationals as well in outdoor. She got eighth. And then there's Josie Pels, our new freshman from Lincoln Lutheran, who set the state meet record and went 12-9 at uh, the state meet here in Nebraska and is, is doing great. And then there's J.C. Pfeiffer, who also made All-American in the pole vault. So you look at one, two, you know, we're talking six girls who have been All-Americans, and then one who's made it to Nationals, and we've got some good things in store. On the distance, mid-distance, I think right off the bat, our 4 by 800 women have a shot at not just making Nationals, but making All-American. We look at uh, senior Rebecca Henricks, who is one of my top runners in cross country, we look at um, Alyssa Fai, who is as fast as her in cross country and is running great. She's a junior. You look at uh, Miranda Rathjen, who is a very, very good senior who ran on our 4x8 last year. And then you also add in Kylan Heritage, who is the phenom freshman who got 33rd at cross country nationals. Kylan's got some top end speed. She's a, she ran 18.30 in the 5K, but she also was the state champion in Idaho in her division last year. So the four of them together should be able to put together a great 4x8 and maybe have a chance this coming weekend to punch their ticket or at least get a B standard. We, we look at, at the conference level at least of um, you know, Hannah Redman scored a bunch for us indoor and outdoor in the 10K, 5K, 3K. Abby Deloach is ready to do that. As a freshman last year, she wasn't able to score, but she's had a great year. Lydia Cook, Sydney Clark, all have done very well this year. And then there's freshman Amy Martin. Freshman, she ran an 1856 5K this year. Uh, she ran 515 in the mile last year in high school, and she ran 1109 in the two mile. Those are big marks. Uh, she's a kid who could potentially squeak into nationals in those individual events. So sprints and hurdles. What can I say? We've got the 4x4. Four four. J.C. Pfeiffer, Rachel Battershell, Sarah Lewis. We lost Jamie Nicodem, but we have Kennedy Mogul, Rebecca Weddell, a freshman. And then Micah Breeze is running really, really well this year in training for the 200-400. And I think out of that bunch, we're going to have a really nice 4x4 um, nice four four plus some open sprint events. And I think with our 4x1 this year, we have Josie Pels, Emily Lloyd, uh, some of our jumpers like Cora Olson and maybe Katie Sievert who can who can put together a four by one that's going to be very competitive. On the hurdles, our hurdle squad is deep. Kennedy Mogul, Sarah Lewis, Rachel Battershell who didn't hurdle last year because she came off an injury. But here's a girl that was a two-time state champion in the 100 hurdles in Wyoming. So. Again, we're going to have you know, Kaylee Boyle really took off in the hurdles last year. She's one of our multis, but as a freshman, she had a fantastic uh, final race at conference. In the throws, Sarah Ragland's a junior. Uh, she's, she got close to qualifying for nationals last year. Addie Shaw has a goal of breaking Callie Robb's school record in the weight throw this year. Um, she was a two-time national discus champion. She got second at nationals in the shot put as a freshman. Um, she's multi-dimensional and very dedicated and focused, and she's had some great things happen already during the early fall season. Bethany Shaw, um, she's another one. Morgan DeYoung, all people who could make it to nationals this year in one or more events. Um, you get to the multis, Kennedy Mogul, Kaylee Boyle, Emily Loy, 
could all hit minimum marks and, and potentially get in. In the jumps, we've got three girls, maybe four, who can go over 18. And this is not including Claire Cornell, who's still in basketball, but at least three girls who can go 18 plus and qualify for nationals. And in the triple jump, coach thinks between 37 and 39 feet um, and beating Leah Larson's school record from last year. And then in the high jump, um, Allison Brooks right now is our one real high jumper. We're hoping to get some more. We've got some coming in next year. So that's the rundown on our top female athletes. And again, there's others that I didn't mention who could have breakthrough years this year. But I'm, we're looking at that and going, okay, that's a squad right there. I don't know if you want to break down the, the men a little bit uh, and, and go through some of the their top athletes sure. as well. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah. Um, back to the pole vault. We, we have probably seven guys, if not more, who can make nationals indoor and many of whom could make All-American. Zach Bennett's sophomore from Lincoln. He, he went almost 15 feet last year. We got Chase Berry, freshman from Seward High, went 16-1 last year. We, as a, as a senior in high school, Dalton Berry, his older brother, is finally getting around the 15 foot plus mark in practice and I think he's going to be able to make, I really think Dalton's going to make nationals this year. Gavin DeHigh is a senior who transferred to us from University of Sioux Falls a couple of years ago, but um, he's been going over you know, well over 16 feet in practice. We've got Tucker Platt who you know, went 15-7. Um, made it to nationals before. Sam Sisko, who made it to nationals 15-7 last year. And then Cody Williams, who's a 16-1 vaulter as well. Those guys, every person I named, could and should make it to nationals, and then it's a matter of who makes All-American. That's, between the guys and the girls, that's a lot of scoring potential. But also, pole vault is a fickle friend because you can have your, you know, I just think of outdoor nationals this last year, and there were two returning national champion women from other schools who no hide it. So you pray for the best, and uh, they are definitely something that's a big factor. You look at the distance, okay, and mid distance. Christian Van Cleve is our top returning 800 runner as a junior. He ran about 154, went 155 last year, and he's, he's a fantastic middle distance runner who is in great shape right now. Question is, can we get a four by eight to nationals? We lost Josiah McAllister, Nathan Matters, and Thomas Taylor. We've got about four guys right now who are all on between 157 and 159 and the 800, and they're going to be developing through the season. So my hope and prayer is they get the A standard, make it to nationals, and, and get some good work done. Uh, we on the distance side, you think of our freshmen who did so well this year: Owen Dawson, Antonio Blaine, Camden Cessna. Not sure exactly how they're going to stack up at the conference level, but they have a high level of ability and competitiveness. All three of them are going to try the steeplechase in outdoor, so that's kind of fun, and I think they can help. Jordan Lorenz was a scorer for us indoor and outdoor in the long distance events. Wyatt Lear was our top cross country runner this year. He didn't have a strong freshman track season, just a little, a little tired from the from the freshman year, but he's running like hotcakes right now, and he's he's going to be good for us. So that kind of summarizes our distance, mid-distance. Then you look at the sprinters. Gavin Davis is returning from, now he was our top sprinter from Texas last year in the 400 and the 200. Xavier Ross is running really well. We've got, uh, those guys were on the 4x4 that went to nationals. Kenny Pato was an alternate. He's running really well. Um, Henry Reimer, who's also a great 400 hurdler, um, is going to be doing 400 type stuff, 4x4 four four on the track. One of the exciting things is that Colton Meyer, a freshman from Lincoln Lutheran, he's a contemporary of Josie Pell's, he was, he probably should have won state in the 110, 300 hurdles last year and injured his foot significantly uh, the meet before state qualifying and his season was done. And He's a guy who we think could make it not help our 4x4 make All-American, but also could make it individually as a freshman in the hurdles. He's a great guy. And then you look at, you throw in Cody Williams. Okay, Cody Williams not only can pole vault, 
he was the state or the state the conference champ in the 110 hurdles last year so he's another hurdler then you look at the throws wow we've got a bunch of returners who've been redshirted who are stronger than ever jacob cornelio is at the top right now he got second at nationals in the weight throw last year and he had some throws recently just in practice that are exciting to think about we've also got some guys like Liam Hennessy, who should hit an automatic national qualifying mark, has a chance at All-American. Jared Peters is a senior. So all three of those guys are seniors. Jared made it to nationals last year in the shot. He's throwing really well right now, so we'd like to see him go back. And then you've got uh, some of the younger guys. Andy Amos has gotten way stronger than last year. He redshirted last year, and he's now basically a junior with uh, sophomore eligibility. And he went out and, and almost hit a national qualifying mark in practice the other day. And then uh, some freshmen like Chris Wren from California. Here's a guy who threw 205 feet in the high school hammer last year. And I think he got third at nationals in the USATF Junior Olympics out in Sacramento. Um, he's a guy that's going to help us immediately. The multis, Cody Williams is back. And he can do a lot of things. And then on the jumps, we've got Samuel Joseph. Samuel transferred to us this year from um, Iowa Central, and he's a guy who could potentially go 47, 48 feet in the triple jump, make All-American there. Uh, Jeremiah Reeser, returning long jumpers, very, very good. Um, he's big. Cody Williams, another, another event that he won at conference was the long jump. And then Austin Schneider is a freshman out of Wahoo. He went 22 feet last year. He's, gonna, he's looking really good. Taylor Beck, senior, captain, triple jumper. Coach thinks he might make it to nationals this year. And then there's Wyatt Loga. Wyatt got second at state in the high jump last year, but we think he's going to be a really good long jumper. And then thinking of the high jump, Wyatt went 6'5 last year as a senior in high school with very little of an approach. And we think uh, he cleared 6'6 six, six in practice the other day, which is a national qualifying mark. So some good things could happen there. And then there's Ben Pratt, who made it to nationals in the high jump, 6'6 guy, and I think he's gonna go much higher than that this year. So right off the bat, that's a lot of names. It's a lot of people to think about, but we have, I'm excited, us coaches are excited, and who knows what can happen, so we will see. Well, I guess this last thing, considering all that, that depth and, and knowing just where, where you left off, last season uh, and, and both teams indoor last year were top 10 in, in the country and how does that uh, maybe impact where your expectations are at coming into this season our expectations are through the roof um, but that's just us we've got a, a group of coaches who each of us as athletes and now as coaches are very competitive we don't like doing badly and so we all pour a lot of energy into these kids in addition to the recruiting process and the kids know that they can trust us to do the best that we can for them so i think we all have high hopes At, on the other hand we've been in this business long enough to know that things don't always break the way you want to so i'm never going to be naive enough to go oh I'm, we're going to do this or we're going to do that i think the potential exists for us to be better than last year both in conference and at nationals and it all depends on who stays healthy, um, how things go with that. Some people just have a season that doesn't go the way they want when it counts. And, and so it all kind of hinges on health of you know, kids performing their best when it's necessary. And, and then we see what happens. Take what we get from it and then move on to outdoor. Okay. All right, stop it right there.